The man died without ever finding out who killed his wife, but the couple's daughter is determined that no other loved one will suffer the same fate. In tonight's Appalachian Unsolved, we revisit the murder of Helen Mills 22 years later, and we find out why investigators now have renewed hope. So whoever has done this horrible thing, no matter where they go, they're going to see it. They know we're after them. And I want them to know I'm not going to give up. We're going to pursue this and you're going to get caught. You're not going to get away with it. It was a heartbreaking message from a grieving husband. On August 31st, 2002, Doug Mills' wife, Helen, went to work at her herbal shop and never came home. More than two decades later, the couple's daughter, Debbie Seeger, is still desperate for answers. For almost 22 years, whoever that person was has been out there living whatever life and whatever quality of life while she's in the ground. Helen Mills was murdered, strangled from behind. The door locked when her killer made his escape. You hear people say it doesn't seem real. It didn't. I knew it was real, but it was... It was horrible. It's very puzzling as to why, because she was a kind, gentle soul, had no enemies at all in the area, just out working, trying to make a living and do her job. Maribel detective Arthur King is putting some fresh eyes on this case that has never been far from the headlines or from the mind of Tony Crisp, who took over as police chief just one day after the murder. We diligently worked that case and we've revisited over and over to make sure that, that what, nothing was left behind. In fact, just this year, Maryville police sent evidence to the FBI to be retested. They're still waiting for the results. We're optimistic, but, but again, we don't have that uh, uh, smoking gun, if you will, at this particular moment. There may be no smoking gun, but there certainly is a cloud of suspicion hovering over at least one person. We have a, a person of interest, perhaps, that would be safe to say, um, but I, I would, uh, would stop short of anything, saying anything other than that. Is that person of interest still alive? They are. Still around in town? I don't know that. Well, family dynamics are quite different, and each family is different, but you hear bits and pieces of different things going on in the family history. That's why we're focusing in on suspects and someone that knew her personally. Someone who knew her, do you think it could have been potentially a family member? That's very possible. Do you think she knew her killer? No one's ever asked me that before. Yes. Unexpected painful moments and questions can still pop up for this grieving daughter all these years later, but her quest for answers has been constant. Money hasn't made people come forward. I'm hoping compassion. Someone, someone knows something. They just need to come forward. That is the hope and plea from investigators as well. They say they won't give up on retesting evidence or doing good old fashioned detective work, but solving this case could all come down to one guilty conscience. You know, hopefully uh, someone says after all this time that uh, you know, they would like to you know, clear their conscience. Uh, we'd certainly would, would love to talk to them about that. Nighttime, daytime, weekends, all, just, you're always thinking about it constantly because it's on your mind because you want victims to be you want closure for the victims, you really do, because they're good people, they want this behind them and live their life, the rest of their life peacefully if they can. I would like to know why. I think that's the only thing I care to know is the why. Both the family and police are offering a reward in this case. If you have any information, you can call East Tennessee Valley Crime Stoppers at the number on your screen.